So, Escape from Tarkov. I've been following this one for quite a while, actually. And what has been the most interesting about it has been the weapon customization. I mean, the weapon customization in this game is shown to be intense. And might as well just get into it all. As you can read on the screen in front of you, Escape from Tarkov is basically that you are a part of a PMC and there is uh, something that has been the contract wars. Most likely I would guess that this is some kind of conflict between private and military contractors. Either way, we have to exfiltrate the blockade and get stuff out. Here's the thing. Uh, we can lose everything we have have with us. It's not like player unknown battlegrounds where you have to scramble and get everything again. No, you can build up a stash and then you can bring out your nice primary weapon and then you can lose it all. And I am terrified at the very idea. I mean, I'm the kind of player who <sighs> finds security in having a standard loadout and similar. And here I can just lose everything. So, this is a bit out of my comfort zone. So, we can only choose our nickname once, and usually I would call just call myself Jonathan RL, but we're gonna see if this is actually... No, I'm not allowed to call myself Rainbow. Uh, and if Rainbow is taken, then I c you can bet your ass that... Uh, Raven will be taken. I'm fairly certain I can't use any of the generic nicknames I actually want to use. So we're just gonna go Jonathan RL. Now, of course, you get to choose your faction. Now, the Bears are the Russians. And the Yusek are the... More or less the villains of the story, as far as I understand it. But they're a Western private military company who has entered Tarkov. Now, I would usually, in a situation like this, just right off the bat pick Yusek. However, when it comes to in-game, the Bears have the far better reputation for being... Basically, the people who doesn't shoot you in the back. So, you are an operator of Bear, Russian PMC contracted of ex-Special Forces officers from all over former Soviet countries. The Bears were fighting in the contract wars as a Russian government proxy to uncover the illegal activities of Terra Group Labs and bring an end to the continued armed conflict with its security subcontractor, the Western-founded PMC USEC. Here's USEC and... Oh, God. God, you are on a contractor of USEC, the offshore established PMC employed by Terra Group Labs as a security subcontractor. Over the contract wars, the primary goal of USEC was to destroy the evidence of any potentially illicit activity of the employer and protect its property from being captured by Bear, the PMC hired by the Russian government to investigate the Terra Group operation. Now, like I said, usually I would identify more with USEC because, you know, they're horrible people, but when it comes to a game like this, you need friends. And for this one, I'm going to look to the guy who basically just said, Hey you, get the fuck into this game. And I don't know if this is my stash, but if it is, I have a sidearm, I have a AK on sling. Uh, let's see here what we have for it. I don't think we have that much. I mean, this is... Ghost Recon Wildlands pride themselves on quite a lot of customization. But here we have a whole different level. I mean, we can... <laughs> Remind me at some point to go into battle without any magazines. I'm dead serious about that. Just no magazines. No magazine at all. 
we can even switch out, you know, different hand guards and everything. As you might have noticed, we don't have anything yet. Uh, as far as I know, on the AKs, you can actually remove this part. Uh, you can remove the receive the the upper receiver, and basically just have a spring below it. Uh, apparently, we don't seem to be able to do that on the 74U, but we need we need to earn our parts first at any rate. And here we have a different backpacks, different magazines, stuff like that, even stuff like water and what the hell this is. Um, so yeah, this could this is fairly interesting. Uh, we also only have pistol magazines, so we don't have that much to, for our... So, we're gonna start off with basically just one of our grashes. And, let's see here. Three magazines for that one, and... Then we have health, skills, map, tasks... This is gonna take some time getting getting into. And let's see here, quick use. Yeah, sounds looks good on that one. Uh, we're also gonna bring some water and some of whatever the hell that is. A bandage and that's a med kit. So yeah, I think we better bring a med kit. Apparently, we also have traders in the game where you can buy stuff like a new stock, you can buy weapons, stuff like that. For some reason, apparently, we need to bring stuff to the traders to finish the deal, but. Ah, rubles. Of course, we need rubles. Obviously, we can probably sell stuff, but. I don't think selling off our primary stock here is a good idea. I mean, everything we bring, we can lose, so... So here we have other sellers with downrange tomahawks, bayonets... There's a lot of items in this game. Cry precision stuff... Hey, even a... Ishbash AK magazine and of course pistols and f even half done AKs. I mean, it's kind of fun that you can buy what is essentially an AK without all the essentials. So, and then you can probably build on that, but it's, it's, it's still fun. Uh, so, let's see here. This guy seems to be a customs officer, so we can't even see what he have, if he have anything. So, escape from Tarkov. Now, here's the fun thing. You can also play as a scab. That means that you are a bandit. And... Being a bandit in this game is basically basically you spawn with random gear and you are one of the NPCs, more or less. And there is a part of me that actually would like to try out the scab before I go into a raid, but we're gonna go with the PMC and I get the feeling that we might actually be on our way in to a live game here, and I'm not really sure if I'm ready for that. In fact, I think we get, need to investigate further. I'm not willing to risk any of my stuff yet, so... I'm just gonna pick scab, so I don't actually risk any of my stuff. Current in-game time, ready. Okay, so right now we are on a scab. 
There is no way to know the place or and time of a scav spawn, as there is no way to guess his starting gear or health condition. Death in the raid won't affect the progress or equipment of your main character, but if you manage to survive as a scav, the loot will go to the main character's stash. Now, I'm gonna blame me for not properly realizing how to actually load either an offline or a PV, uh, PvE game here. Maybe there are no such thing as a PvE game in Tarkov, but I think that playing as a scav and not risking to lose everything just because I didn't know how to play sounds like a fair deal to me. So we're almost loaded in, and... It would be interesting if we just spawned us an NPC already in combat. And the first thing that happens is we get a shot to the face. I don't think that is what... The scavengers do, but... It would also be very interesting to see if... We will be hostile to other scavengers. I would actually presume that would be the case. So, loading time is not optimal. I really should have gotten a uh, SSD hard drive for this one, but no luck on that one. And we are awaiting the session start. Well, we can hear the crickets at least. All right. Uh, I've been tipped off about some things, and one of the things I've been tipped off is you can actually control your movement speed in a quite a clever way. As if you check down to the left, uh, you can see that I am adjusting my movement speed with my mouse button, and the way to do the way I'm doing this is by scrolling my mouse button, and it will control my movement speed in quite a f quite a nice way. So if I want to slow down, instead of you know crouching or doing what you would do in any of the other games, I simply slow down. Sound is of course very. I don't know if there was someone there. Yeah. Sounds of firing in the distance. Now, like Player Unknown Battlegrounds, I would guess this is a game where you have a vested interest in staying low and careful. And of course, I am very tense right now. I have. No idea where I'm supposed to go. I have no idea where a potential enemy is, and I started to sprint basically out of sheer habit. But I want to look like I'm some harmless MP, harmless NPC. The fact that I'm not is a whole different story. Also, the darkness is really well done. It serves to give the entire experience a very creepy feeling. So we're gonna move a little bit faster. And we're gonna try and move in a way that doesn't immediately reveal the fact that we are actually not an NPC character. Right now, there's no way for us to determine if there is anyone close to us, save from the fact that we can hear gunfire. But I have no idea from where that gunfire comes from. Either way, we really shouldn't stand out in the open. Oh, I like this. This I like. There's an entire menu about how I could approach this door. Everything from breach to knock to... Yeah, I think there's someone inside shooting, actually. Uh, 
That is a lock on this. Yeah. I don't have anything to breach that with, so... Also, I haven't actually managed to get my settings properly, so there's a high probability that if you're typing in the chat, I will not see it until I actually solve that one. So, apologies if you write in the chat and do not see what, what it is I'm saying. Or rather. That didn't come out right at all. I am deadly paranoid about the slightest sound that I make. I think there's someone in here. Either way, this is a good way for me to learn the controls, learn everything. I mean, <clears throat> I have a light going on in my in my room right now, and I have a huge desire to just put it out, to just let the darkness surround me and this game because they have done darkness in a really masterful way. It doesn't really help that you can hear fire uh, fi uh, shots going off in the distance and what could be firefights or stuff like that. That's not really... Ah, crap, we got killed. I didn't even have time to aim, but at least we injured the guy. <laughs> okay, so drop dead, 7861. Uh, killed me after five minutes. So, we lost two body parts and least damage part is left leg. We traveled 0 0.8 kilometers and we actually dealt 77 damage with two hits. I mean, my first game could have gone arguably worse. Uh, my screen resolution doesn't seem to be properly set either for that matter. So, I wonder how this have all been shown on stream. In fact, I'm now worried about how it would look on stream. So, I might actually have to... Yeah! Hi, LP Mitron. Um, like I said, I've switched to borderless now. So, if you pardon, I'll need to just confirm that... Everything is all right, and that yeah, and now I can actually read what people are saying as well. So, like, like I said, oh, I can't spawn for a scab uh, for 30 minutes now, and I am scared to go as my main character. I have no idea where I'm actually supposed to go and that is part of the problem I mean I'm supposed to survive but what does survival mean the game so far uh, doesn't really make a good job of telling you that so I'm just gonna check graphics overall visibility load quality no sharpen that's good and yeah. The FOV is unacceptably unacceptable. In fact, I would like to have 90 FOV. But apparently we can't have that. I'm just gonna check my character's inventory again, because the thing is, I, I don't want to lose this. Oh, uh, far too much. Uh, Escape from Tarkov is currently on sale, uh, but uh, 
I paid about 40 euros for this because the price you see on the web page uh, it doesn't include the taxes so I'm just gonna write that down There we go. Uh, like I said, I'm terrified about going into a combat situation and potentially losing all this stuff. I mean, I have a spare black rock, I have a spare backpack and everything like that, but I am not really keen on going into a battle where I may potentially lose everything. So if you don't mind, I'm actually going to look up something. I heard that the, if you play a just standard PvE offline... Yeah. Right now I'm looking up to if... There is an offline mode. I don't think there is actually. Yeah, sorry, I am a bit distracted right now since I'm reading and trying to... Yeah. So, sorry about that. I'm trying to find out if there is a way to play and actually learn the maps and everything like that before I risk gear and everything like that, so... So I'm sorry that there is currently very little, very little of actual gameplay, uh, but you are you're gonna have to live with that. Because I'm not sure I wanna risk that shiny new AK. Okay, so go through all the menus as if playing online when you select the location and time if it asks you if you want to play offline. Ticks whatever boxes you like and play. Okay, so that explains it. Uh, town is not available, but factory is. So, we want to play it in the day. And enable offline mode for this. And as you can see, attention. Offline mode progress is not being saved in the offline mode. Also at this stage in testing, offline mode includes items for test loading. So yeah, we are going offline and that means we only have our trusted AK at our side. But we can pick up items, basically like player known battlegrounds. So we are loading into the PvE mode now. And this is going to be very interesting indeed. Deploying, 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 deploying. The funny thing is, I had shorter loading time here than I had as a scavenger. Our frame rate is pretty good too, for that matter, so let's slow down a bit. Oh crap. I've seen enough videos about Escape, to Tar Escape from Tarkov to know exactly I mean exactly 
what's waiting for me outside. In the name of the Lord and Tuchanka, protect me! Ah, it's very easy to get paranoid in this game. Very easy indeed. I mean, shit. I can hear something. Tango! Tango! Crap. I don't think I... Oh, need ammo. I don't think I have a... Oh, crap. Another one. I think we got him. No, he's still there. <laughs> like I said, I've seen enough Escape from Tarkov videos to see that was going. We survived for a full minute. One minute. At least, let's see here. Damage dealt, 224. Ammo used, 30. Hit count, 6. Overall accuracy, 0 0.17. Least damage dart is left leg, and we traveled 100 meters. <laughs> I like this game already. So let's do it all again. Factory, next. Enable offline mode, enable PvE. I know that there is a mate of mine said, learn the maps first. Don't turn on PvE, just, you know, learn the maps. But I don't think it would be very satisfying for you if I did not die. So, we're in a, I think we're in a different part of the factory now. Nah, we're still in this... Horrible death trap. I'm gonna slow down a bit. Wait for status scavenger? No. I would really like there to be a PvE mode where someone could actually watch my back in all of this, but sadly, Escape from Tarkov, unlike other games I am very much into, and with that I mean like Squad, Project, uh, Project Reality, and Rising Storm 2. Uh, Escape from Tarkov is not a team game in that sense. You can, of course, find your friends and team up in it. But it's not something that currently is built in. It's not like Player Unknown Battlegrounds where you can just spawn as a team. Oh crap, someone is here. They are throwing a grenade at me! Crap. And here I was thinking he was gonna sell me cookies. Tango down! Tango down! However, I think the entire fucking factory might have heard that one. And if he has any mates close by, they will be coming running. Told you. I think we got that guy too. Not sure. Yeah, his mates are coming up, coming for us, and I'm fairly certain we need to. <sighs> He's speaking Russian. Pretty good Russian, too. Uh, I don't really know how to use a med kit. <laughs> oh, I accidentally just turned on full auto. Uh, I like the fact that you can see your watch on the screen there. So, we're gonna try and sneak up. Tango down. Hopefully that's the last guy. Okay, so... I don't really know how to search people's bodies yet. It's not Y, because Y is... Oh, there's an entire... Apparently if I press F1, I will mumble in Russian. Yeah, we're not we're not gonna do that. So in fact I am going to go into settings, 
controls and just sh check what the action button actually is. Uh, because I didn't actually check that. Examine weapon, inventory, special action, modify control. Control. At least tab will... Yeah, we're using the medkit now, so... We actually got experience from using the medkit too, which I have to like. Our head is in bad shape. Our head is damaged from blood loss. Our stomach and left leg are also pretty. In fact, I think we're gonna have to use the bandage before we expire from blood loss. I think actually our head was about to end to expire there. For oh god, here they come again. We might have actually... Oh. Oh god. <laughs> I'm, I'm not entirely sure, but did the, a the NPC... Uh, ba did he give flip us the finger before he killed us? Fairly certain he did. And if this was a real raid, we would have gone to level 2. But this is basically just offline. So we're going to continue with playing PMC. Uh, PMC on offline with PvE. Because I think that is a way to learn. And also a bit more relaxing. I mean, imagine if this was my first game and I lost all my starting gear. Thanks to, you know, not actually knowing the game. So, I have to say that Escape from Tarkov have a high learning curve. And, I mean, I haven't actually... I never actually found Examine Weapon. Uh, interact is F button, so... We can't interact with that one, however. So we're gonna slow things down a bit. We're gonna, going to advance through this corridor here. I mean, they've done a terrific job with the environments here. I mean... Escape from Tarkov could... While I don't think it could be the next player unknown Battlegrounds, because it's not as easily acceptable, uh, accessible, it could be the player unknown battlegrounds of tactical shooters. Also, it's a fairly good player unknown battlegrounds experience for role players. Tango down. I've learned that the most, or at least I've learned so far against these NPCs, that uh, the most important part of the game right now is to okay so search so here's a saiga on him we're gonna take that and we're gonna leave it at that i don't know if he had that much ammo for it though i think we're gonna need to go back and check yeah we're regardless where i put my chat window it's always gonna find a way to be in the way so yeah we have We're actually pretty good on bo on health and not as good on ammunition, of course. But we need to go down to... Oh, crap. Breach! 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 He's on top of us. Fairly certain of that. What the fuck have they done to the front sight post on this gun? We need to be very, very slow and methodical on this. I mean, I haven't actually checked how much ammo is in the Saiga. And I have already decided... <laughs> He's down. Then go down.
I mean, once you get over the fact uh, that the NPCs can come at you from basically any direction, that you, that you are vulnerable, and of course the anxiety of losing all your stuff, the scavengers are... Yes, please, we'll take both your Googles and your helmet. And if you... Let's just put that in... I can't actually put it somewhere else. And... We can't actually see what he has in his scabbard. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Uh, our Saiga has five rounds left. Our AK has a few more. So. Oh, and the Saiga, of course, lacks its top receiver. Because why would you have a top receiver on a gun? I like the fact that experience actually is not that hard to get. I mean, you can get the experience from exploring, you can get it from healing up, you can get it from fighting enemies, so there's a lot of ways to get experience that doesn't necessarily mean you have to be the last guy standing in order to get it. I mean, if you got a playthrough where you managed to escape without shooting anyone, I'm fairly convinced that... Uh, that um, there would be bonus experience for that too. And we're gonna raise the initial volume a bit. I think this is one of those games where you really need to listen in order to get stuff done. So we're gonna increase our speed a little bit. Switch to the AK. Uh, for some reason, I don't mind the two weapon system in Escape from Tarkov. Uh, or at least I mind it, but I don't really hate it. Like, I. Oh crap, we fired a shot without meaning to. Oh crap! Negligent. We're paying the price for negligent discharge here. I wonder how many more there are of them. Switching to shotgun, we're gonna we're gonna get this guy. Oh crap! He's down. More of them. We're not gonna make this uh, make it out of this fight. Oh, they really like their grenades. These people. Using med kits, sweet. I'm gonna see if this guy has anything on him that we can actually use. No, Saiga, helmet, tactical rig. Oh, and I think. Th well, we did our best. <laughs> we sincerely did our best on that one. So, we survived for six minutes that time, and there's a lot of stats here, and I like the fact that they include a lot of stats. So, of course, we don't get any of these points. All of these points is basically just teasing us with, you know, what if you played online, then you could get all these points. But, I'm not really sure you can expect me to play online today. Uh... Because right now I would most likely just prefer to learn a bit more about the game. So we're gonna keep sp we're gonna keep spawning at the factory. And so let's see here, 15 minutes, 30 minutes. Apparently we are on the insane difficulty here. Here's the hard difficulty, here's the insane difficulty, the woods. I get the feeling that we are supposed to survive for 15 minutes. Uh, but I'm not entirely sure. And then we have, you know, play uh, amount of actual players on the field here. 4 to 8, 
five to nine. So, my guess is that escaping from Tarkov involves surviving. So, deploying in the factory. So, we need to slow down a bit. Check where the fuck the enemy may might be. Speed up a bit. Keep calm and fire. Oh crap. Oh, he's dead. We just shot... I mean, I know this is a clipping issue, but you have to admit that looks kinda... kinda... nice with... Let's search his backpack. I like the fact that this takes time. Time that you may not actually have. And he's got ammunition on him for a Saiga. But I don't really have the time for a Saiga. I'm gonna search this guy as well. He has a standard of a 4 AK on him. He also has a bunch of AK bags, so... We're gonna take those. And we're gonna... We have a ball of water as well, but we can relocate here. So we now have three... AK mags for the Vepor. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but we need to search his pockets as well. But he doesn't seem to have. Oh, he has a grenade! But he didn't have a backpack, so we're gonna switch to the Vepor here. There we go. Um, let's... Ah! I need to actually move this from my backpack to my tactical rig in order, in order to use them for reloads. That was an epiphany. So now that I have them in my rig, I can reload my AK. And I can reload my 74. Nice. We can also reload the Grash, so we should m make sure all our weapons are loaded and ready. This appears to be a... a sem civilian version since it's locked to semi-automatic, but then again... Let's see here. Keep an eye out. Is that some, is that light come from a flashlight? I think there is someone with a flash yeah, there's someone with a flashlight there. Enemy PMC moving fast. I mean he's moving ridiculously fast, in fact. I like that, but Come on, where did he go? I don't think we got the game. We are in a decent shape here. We should use the first aid if we have any. We can't just jump down though. It would have been easier for us if we, if we could, but... Ah, uh, crap. I'll... 
the entire speed setting takes a while getting used to. And we may need to crouch in order to get in, get back in here. So we're increasing our speed. And we need to keep an eye out. We're switching to our military grade weapon with fully automatic just in case we didn't get the game. I can tell you one thing, he's not here. I don't know who this guy is, but we're searching him. And he's got juice and he's got paper. And he has, has an unknown item. Examine. And when we examined it, it turned out to be a UV lamp. So we need to keep on moving. I can really imagine this game where you like synchronize with your friends and tell tell stuff like yeah I'm currently in this location and then you link up and then you have a squad experience on VO, VOP but I'm not the kind of guy who would play something like this for the solo experience at least not have we killed that guy no he's alive there's someone else here Tango down. It should be safe to search them. Let's see here. Shotgun. Tactical rig. He should have shotgun shells on him. Yeah, we don't need any shells. This guy, on the other hand, might actually have stuff we can use. No, because he has a 9mm gun instead. Examine. SMG carbine. Let's search his pockets. If he has more ammo, then... No, he doesn't have that much ammo, really. Contact. Crap. I actually thought we were gonna win that one, but I didn't. I just simply failed. And apparently we are not supposed to... Um, to just survive. We need to reach one to three extraction points on each and every map. Now, I can imagine that reaching one of those extraction points might be horribly, horribly complicated. Uh, especially as uh, our role is basically to survive these guys. So let's just keep it moving. Uh, we're actually going to try the woods this time. Uh, afternoon, PMC mode, enable PvE. The reason I prefer to have PvE enabled for this is that I am of the opinion that if I'm gonna learn this game and learn what part of the game works for me and stuff like that, uh, then I need to... Then I need to uh, have the danger. If I'm just running around the map, then I'm not going to take it seriously. And if I don't take it seriously, I don't learn. So that is why I am currently wrestling with these their, their uh, friends of mine. Which turns out to be, you know, mercenaries, stuff like that. 
scavengers. And so the thing is, I need to check something else on the list now, and that is if there is a map screen because uh, apparently not. Uh, this is gonna complicate things. I mean, the entire point of the game is that I'm supposed to go somewhere. But I don't seem to know where. We're in the woods, so we gotta move a bit quicker now. I mean, there, uh, without a map, uh, there's no actual way for me to actually find... Uh, are we gonna move up the pistol magazines as well? There we go. I like the fact that your hand is moving away from the weapon while you're using the inventory screen. Like you're actually reaching down to your backpack or your vest. I mean, it, I could stand on one of the extraction points right now and I wouldn't recognize it. Is that a nuclear plant up ahead? With my luck, it's probably a nuclear plant, yes. So we're gonna move up. Be very careful about where we're putting it down our feet and where we're going because right now we're walking in the open now walking in the open is something I would never do on a PvP server uh, so I am a bit more careless with the uh, with uh, bots than I am with other players, but then again, another player might actually deci simply decide not to shoot me then, because they not see I am one of the bears, or I am one of the whatever. Uh, apparently team killing is a thing in this game, and uh, there's going to be a karma system that essentially makes if you team kill or stuff like that, then you're gonna have more bad luck. Like, you're gonna get ill quicker, or you're not going to be able to do certain things or stuff like And the vendors are not gonna like you as much. And I can see the appeal in such a system. I really can. However, what makes... Uh, Escape from Tarkov appealing is pretty much the entire premise that even loot you had for a while can be lost. Everything you bring with you can be lost. And I don't know if that's the evac point or if the evac point is simply that way, but the the fact that I haven't run into anyone yet is slightly, uh, slightly worrying. Okay, so whoever put up this barricade has locked it, locked the doors. So we need to find another route inside what amounts to the escape point. Well, at least that's how I read it. I mean, there wasn't anything that actually told me that there was an evac point in that area. But I can't see any route past the wall either. So I think I could going to get back there. Try and maybe follow the fence instead. 
Or maybe this is just a border to the factory, I don't know. I mean, it says evac point here, but maybe that's not the evac point we're supposed to go to. So let's just go maximum speed and head for the other direction. Because this, this more looks more to me like it's the edge of the map than anything else. And the fact that... I mean, if I were to put down an evac point in that regard, I would make it vulnerable. Or rather, the opposite. I would make sure there were people there to stand guard. And... If there's something I haven't actually seen in this map so far, it's people who are fighting me. Of course, I'm probably going to take a sniper round to the head, just because I jinxed it. Building up ahead. Let's close on it. Habitual reloader. That's me. I reload even when I don't have to. Because I like the fact that it feels secure. Slow down. Sweep it. And... Basically now you see me asking, did I actually, actually enable the PVE? Because we have precious little enemy units around. Once again, the lack of an actual map is slightly annoying. Even if I n knew where to go, I don't even know where I am. And that is highly annoying. Oh, look, a tank. A Russian T-80 by the looks of it. I wonder if we can take this one. <laughs> Most likely we cannot take the tank, but... A man can dream, right? A man can dream. I wonder if the tank barrel is trying to point us in the right direction. Seems to be a ruined house up ahead. Still no contact with the enemy. Move up. I'm getting even more and more convinced that I simply forgot to enable the PvE mode. Of course, it would be hilarious if I realized that I'm actually playing the online mode, but I'm... The <sighs> There's simply no way I forgot to enable the offline mode, so there you have it. We're closing in on a tank and what appears to be the power plant. The power plant would of course be a natural rallying point for pretty much anything in the area, so...
Checkpoint up ahead. Now that looks like the same wall I was at before. I am tempted to just fire a round off in there and see if that attracts any attention. Let's search this bag. Oh, herring, my favorite. Also some cola, nice. Let's drink about half of it. And then we realize what we actually drunk was some kind of horrible poison that ruins your tea. Oh wait, that's Golem. I mean, where am I supposed to go? There's no actual way where... I don't even have a compass. I mean, having a compass that showed you at least what direction to go would be helpful. But all I'm doing now is basically just waste time. So I'm gonna check once again if there's some way for me to find out where the hell I'm supposed to go. We can check time. Uh, but apparently time is already zero, so either we missed our window. Or time doesn't matter in offline mode. I think I would go if I were to guess that time doesn't really matter in offline mode. I mean, you don't stand to lose anything, so we're just gonna disconnect. And we're gonna confirm our leave. It was very interesting that you don't actually lose... Oh, uh, I was going to say that if you leave the raid early, you don't lose anything, but that's obviously the case. You do lose everything. But since this was offline mode, we didn't hopefully lose anything. No, we did not. So the first thing we're gonna do is actually take what we learned move up our pistol pouches and we're gonna keep one spare mag in our backpack apparently we can act, act, store spare ammunition too but oh here's our rubles apparently we do have rubles I didn't think we did Anyway, that's my first look at Escape from Tarkov. You can most likely expect me to showcase this game more in the future. And hopefully then we can also move into the multiplayer and get horribly stomped that way. Catch you later. Bye.